Well, hello loves and happy Sunday to you. Um, all right, so let's dive into this um, piece. Look at how gorgeous this is. Mm, I am just so, so pleased with it. I just love everything about it, the layers, everything. I'm not gonna go into, we'll talk more about it after the video. Um, I just wanna quickly go over the supplies that I used and um, give you some thoughts as to what how my layers went together. Um, and then we'll create, and then we'll have a conversation about it all at the end of the video. <clears throat> all right, so I, um, let's see. So I used probably three collage packs um, and I'll show those to you. I showed them to you at the beginning of the video. So um, you'll see those and those will be on sale. Then I used th four, I think I used all of these um, <clears throat> stencils. These are new to the shop. And then this is the hydrangea. All of those will be listed um, <clears throat> on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. Okay. Other supplies that I use. So I did a lot of mixing my paints, a lot of mixing, um, because I wanted, I didn't want just the straight, straight colors for my flower <clears throat> and for my leaves. And so I mixed, for my flowers, I mixed some quinacridone magenta, some burnt sienna, and some gesso. Um, I mixed those two, oh, and some uh, yellow oxide, or this is actually caramel by Lucas, but it's like a yellow oxide. Um, so I mixed these three colors together to get my um, flower. And then I did the technique where I stencil and then I shift it and then I stencil again, and it's just perfect for this. Um, for the leaves, I used um, my Lucas olive green and some matcha green tea and I added some raw umber to my olive green to dirty it up which is a favorite thing that I do this is my raw umber um, <clears throat> then for the background I used a combination of burnt umber and raw umber or raw umber raw umber burnt umber um, I because I wanted that kind of darkness for the background, but I wanted the warmth of the raw umber. Raw umber has a more yellow undertone where the uh, burnt umber has a yellow undertone and raw umber has more, it's kind of smoky. And you can see the difference in color there. Um, so I mixed the two of those together and then I added um, matte medium because I wanted a real matte finish, but I also added some um, glazing medium. This is Liquitex glazing medium and I used matte medium. I combined that with my glaze or my water, whatever you want to call it, because I put that matte medium and that glaze in there and glazed over um, the background. The other thing I did for the background was I used gesso, regular gesso, um, and rubbed it through my stencil, which gives me all of this wonderful, wonderful <clears throat> texture. I also spray painted, um, so I used, let me show you my gesso. Um, I use Utrecht gesso. It is new to me and I love it. Um, I have used Liquitex gesso forever and I am loving this gesso. Then I used some Liquitex white spray paint and I spray painted real quick this, the letting go stencil, um, this one. And that pattern shows up so well. And the reason I didn't do the gesso um, is because I didn't want to have this completely textured. Um, usually texture for me is better, more texture the better, but I knew that I was going to put the flower down and I, I didn't want it to get too confusing the background because I really wanted this to be a focal point. Plus I knew I was going to do all of this stuff down here. Um, so I just spray painted that. And then the thing about spray paint is it has a chemical in it to keep it fluid. And so it ends up like almost like a resist. So when I put the paint over it kind of spread out a little bit, it was the coolest effect. And so um, I love it when those kinds of things happen as you're creating, because now I know that I will do that again when I want my paint to kind of resist off of what I stencil. Um, so that is the background. Um, I, I 
layered everything, did my wash, and then I added my additional papers here because I knew that I wanted them to show up. And if I had put them down first, um, they would have gotten covered up. And I wanted them to be part of the focal point, to add to the focal point. So um, I put those down after I did all of the other fun things. Um, and then I just used a bunch of inks. Uh, let's see. Um, Muted Violet, Titanium White, Deep Violet, uh, Muted Gray, Carbon Black, um, and I used that around the piece. I used some um, raw umber to, with my palette knife to kind of get some of this kind of dragging effect and then dripped on top of it. Um, I went through a few phases of trying to get my writing down because I wanted so badly to use my dip pen um, with my, I wanted it to be super subtle. You can't really read it. And I did that. Um, that's how I wanted it. Um, but I wasn't really getting what I wanted with my dip pen. So I went to my fine line applicator, which is just been with me for forever and ever. <clears throat> I did some shading with my Stabilo all pencil to kind of get this kind of smoky feeling around it. And then I came back in with my general's charcoal pencil with extra soft or it's it's extra soft and did lots of scratchy lines and added some different shading and things like that in there and then I just grabbed some um, soft pastels to kind of add to I don't think I used that one um, but I added some color to the leaves and some different purples around here some on the flowers to give it a little extra dimension and um, I think that is about it I use the, the vintage papers in here are fantastic and I love this piece and I love the meaning of it. So we'll talk about that at the end of the video but I wanted to go over th everything before I started so you knew what I was doing and how I did it and you can kind of just get lost in the process as I create. So let's get creating.
Well, hello, loves. Um, I just loved this piece. Oh my gosh, it's just so, so beautiful. I'm just so pleased with how it turned out. Um, I just love it. I went over everything at the beginning of the video, supplies and all of that, and kind of how my process went um, so that you kind of understand what I was doing, that kind of thing. Um, so I don't think that I need to go over any of that. And um, just a reminder that the collage packs that I used and the stencils that I used will be on sale this week. Um, and I think that's it for things. So let's talk about this piece. So I love that the vintage papers um, kind of remind me of like these hills. Like it's, <clears throat> it's actually not the vintage paper. It's actually the, the bits below that kind of feel like a step down of a hill. And then I put those flowers in there to kind of look like they're growing out of it. Um, and then the kind of the, the, the juxtaposition between the dark and the light and love that too. And all of that kind of had, has meaning for me. Okay, so the inspiration behind this piece came from Morgan Harper Nichols. I have her app um, and you get these gorgeous, gorgeous pieces of art with her writing on it. And it's just, it's such an inspiration to have it pop up on your phone. It just is so gorgeous and um, inspiring and gets your thoughts going about creativity, but her, her, her quotes are so amazing. So this popped up and it said, in a world that demands constant movement, rebelliously choose rest, rebelliously choose rest. I absolutely love that phrase. And then you can tap on it and it'll give you more definition. Three reminders when you feel unproductive. And so the thing for me is that rest is really, really hard for me. Um, I'm a worker and um, that's not necessarily something I should be proud of because I am an overworker <clears throat> and I can um, skip things to work. Um, part of it is because I love what I do um, and my work is also my hobby, <clears throat> but, um, I have to remember what's important, um, who's important. Uh, I have to remember to care for myself because if I don't do any of that, then all of this really doesn't matter. So, um, uh, Productivity. So she says reminders when you feel unproductive, because a lot of times I think when for me rest, I feel like I'm not I'm not doing anything. I'm not getting anything done. Um, productivity is not what creates meaning in life, which is like I just said, it's not what creates meaning in life. This is all wonderful and it's all meaningful. And I get to touch and reach out and hear your stories and all of that. Um, and that's enriching and beautiful, but it doesn't, it's, it's not a phone call to my kids or it's not, um, time with my grandbabies. It's not, you know, it's a different kind of thing. And so, um, productivity is not what creates meaning in life. It's those little things, those little things that create meaning. Um, it's okay to rest even if you don't feel like you deserve it. Sometimes I think, um, that is very much a true statement for me and maybe for you that there's something that I have to earn, that it's something that I have to earn, um, that it has a lot, like my overworkingness, if that's a word, has a lot to do with self-esteem and different things like that. And um, so that's something that you could probably examine for your own self. I know that is true for myself. I know that that is something that I have worked on many, many times with my therapist. Um, and so um, it is a deliberate act for me to rest and to feel worthy of it. Um, so, and then it, she goes on to say, do what you love just because. So <clears throat> for you, finding your creative space and your creative time, maybe that's your rest. For me, not being in the studio and doing things outside 
um, decorating the house, um, all the things that I love outside of this space, because I love this space. Um, taking a nap, uh, just sitting on the porch, um, all of those kinds of things is rest, and I have to really make it a deliberate decision for myself. So, I read that, and it just so happened, as I read that, um, we were taking off to see, it, it had been two, two years now since we've seen a couple of our kids. We have a lot of kids. And um, <clears throat> so we were headed to Chicago for, for a little mini trip to see our kids and our new grandbaby and brothers, my husband's brothers and family and all these things. We're all vaccinated. We've all done our things. We've all, you know, we're all, we were all safe. Um, and I felt this, this, uh, this struggle because I have so much to do and I almost felt re resentful and I had to go back and that the, her words, and there was more to that whole passage that was very, very deep. And, but her words kept coming back to me that what are the moments that matter? What are they? And sometimes it is my creative time because we need that space to just breathe and be and be ourselves and not have to do anything for anyone or any, we need that. We need that. Um, I, it's also our family, our kids, those, those people that matter the most. And so I was going, I was thinking through this process as we were headed to Chicago along with my to-do list. And I um, had to physically say to myself, Sean, stop this. Rest. It's okay to find rest. And to just pause. No, everything's going to be fine. The staff was here working. Everything was, it was all going to be okay. And even if something didn't get done here, what's really the worst that could happen? And so once I, I walked myself through that and I got to my place of, you are worthy of rest. I was okay. And, and I took time to find moments in our journey, our physical journey, and my own emotional journey to um, be present and just really, really cherish the time. And so at, when we came back, <clears throat> I had a couple more days where I decided not to work. It never happens. Um, and I worked in the garden, I worked on the yard, I did some painting in the house, like decorating things, and I took lots of naps, and I, I just really honestly did a whole lot of nothing. And it felt so good, and it felt so refreshing. And so <clears throat> this piece represents that, that kind of slowing down, it represents the dark and the light, that struggle between finding this beauty of rest. Um, the flowers are in there because, you know, I had a chance to kind of pick in my flowers and put some dirt around them and water them and, you know, all those kinds of things. And just that, that kind of empty space of not having to overthink everything. And so that light and that dark, that struggle, the flowers of feeling of that kind of peaceful um, action that really means a whole lot of nothing, but it was restful. Um, and then the, col the colors, the darker colors, all that um, emotion that it, sometimes it takes to make ourselves feel worthy of really anything but of rest. Um, there's a lot of emotion there, and there's a lot of things, a lot of layers that, you know, that we kind of have to climb through. Um, so that's th that. And then my writing here is finding rest. I had to find it. It wasn't going to happen. It wasn't just something that naturally comes to me, and it might naturally come to you. My husband is great at resting. I, however, am not. I'm just not great at it. And so finding it is a purposeful thing for me. 
and knowing that I am worthy of rest is hard. And, um, but I know it to be true. And so today, whatever you're searching for, whether it's rest or space or creative time or conversations, whatever it is that you are needing or maybe that you struggle with finding, you have to find it. It won't just happen. That conversation with your kids or your friend or your whatever won't just happen. You have to find it. You have to pick up the phone or send the email or whatever. Um, finding rest. You have to take the nap. You have to do this. You have to make the space in your schedule to actually do it. You have to find whatever it is. Maybe you don't need to find rest. Maybe you need to find work. Maybe you need to find action. Maybe you're not feeling, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you need to find um, clarity. Whatever that, whatever the thing is that you need to find, you have to find, you have to do the physical action. Make the space for it to happen. Pick up all the phones or do all the things to make it happen. It won't just happen. And whatever you're trying to find, remember in the process that it's okay to rest, that it's okay to feel unproductive. It's okay to, to run from productivity when our world demands it so much. It's okay to take the time to have the conversations, to make the hugs, to whatever it is. Um, but it's okay to take that time, but we have to do the, we have to take the action to actually make it. And most importantly, for you to know that you are worthy just how you are, just right now how you are. You are worthy of rest. You are worthy of your creative space. You are worthy of a nap. You are worthy of those conversations. You are worthy. Period. That's it. So that is my, that's my message to myself. And that's my message to you this Sunday. Um, I just love this piece. And um, thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for you. And I'm so grateful for your comments, for your emails. Oh, the stories I hear. You let me into your lives. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. Um, so thank you. Um, if you... Um, are not subscribed, I hope that you do and hit the alarm bell um, so that you never miss a video so that I can come and, and chat with you and share with you my life and we can be together and create together. All right, my loves, um, have a wonderful Sunday. Um, may it be restful and peaceful and may you know how worthy you are of, for worthy of anything, but worthy of rest. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.